are we going to talk about antacids in this screencast. Um, it is the objective is to state and explain how excess acidity in the stomach can be reduced by the use of different bases. pH in biological systems are, are important because pH impacts the activity of enzymes. pH is the lowest, meaning the most acidic, in the stomach, where the pH is a 1 to 2. Okay, This is important because it kills bacteria, and it is optimal for the function of digestive enzymes. These pH levels in the stomach are controlled through the production of gastric juices, that is hydrochloric acid. Sometimes there is an overproduction of this gastric juices, this hydrochloric acid. Common causes for this are excess alcohol consumption, smoking, stress, and anti-inflammatory medications. The effects um, of this excess acid is acid indigestion, heartburn, also known as acid reflux, and this is really the um, acid in the stomach moving up into the esophagus. esophagus, sorry. All right, and then also um, ulcers can also happen. And ulcers are really a chronic condition where the acid starts actually uh, destroying or eating into the side of the stomach. Acid, um, Okay, or the stomach lining. In these, there are medications uh, developed to counteract that, like Pepsid, Zantac. Um, and these are not antacids. Those are really um, conditions for chronic heartburn. In the antacids, you're actually neutralizing the acid that's present in the stomach. Okay. And acids are weak bases. There are four that you need to know. Okay, so four main ones that you are going to need to know. Um, and it's important to note that the, it important to note that these are weak bases, okay, and it it can't be a strong base, okay. So really, it, they are weak bases and and acids because strong bases would destroy the tissue on the way down. Okay, so and acids are weak bases. There are four main ones, and it's important to note that they are weak bases due to the um, destruction that a strong base would do to the tissues on the way down. Okay, So aluminum hydroxide is a solid reacting with hydrochloric to form water and the aluminum chloride. Magnesium hydroxide with the hydrochloric forming water and magnesium chloride. Um, basic double replacement reaction. You are responsible to know the equations, predict the products, and also to compare the mole ratios. For every one mole of aluminum hydroxide, it will react with three moles of hydrochloric. For the magnesium hydroxide, it's just two moles of hydrochloric. So on a mole basis, the aluminum hydroxide would neutralize more acid than the magnesium hydroxide. The other two antacids that you are responsible to know, 
would be the sodium bicarbonate okay, and calcium carbonate. The sodium bicarbonate reacts with hydrochloric in a one-to-one -one mole ratio to produce water and CO2. If you remember, the double replacement will actually get me the H2CO3, which further decomposes into the water and the carbon dioxide. Calcium carbonate, again, double replacement reaction forms the same thing, further decomposing into the water and the CO2. The side effect with these two gases, I'm sorry, these two antacids, is that it produces a gas. So the side effect here, and this is important to note, is that it produces a gas. This causes bloating and flatulence. Two undesirable side effects, by the way. So, because of that um, formation of CO2, there are additives that are sometimes added to antacids to combat these um, unintended or undesirable side effects. Um, the first one is an anti-foaming agent, and that is going to prevent bloating and flatulence. Um, it's important that you know that the name of this compound is dimethicone. Not important to know the formula, but important to know the name and that it is an anti-foaming agent used to combat the bloating and flatulence from the production of CO2. The other additive is an alginate. Okay, that's the salt of an alginic acid. And this is material that floats on top of the stomach contents should have said contents, and that prevents reflux, so it prevents the acid from going back up into the esophagus. If I were to draw a picture of a stomach, and no judgment on the drawing of the stomach, okay, with the contents, okay, this alginate is going to float on top of the contents, and that prevents the acid from going back up into the esophagus. I thought of a way that you might remember that the alginate additive is the floating on top because alginate sounds something like algae. An algae floats on top of a pond. I've got nothing for the dimethicone being an anti-foaming agent. So again, you've got to know for this antacid unit the four types of the reactions predicting products and then which additives and what the functions are for those two additives. Moving on.